So if you recall last class, we talked about a lock manager app case study that used Spring Web MVC and synchronous two-way calls in order to do the, the distributed semaphore capability. We're now going to revisit this case study, keep the requirements the same, but change the technology that we're using to implement it. And so this is now going to use Spring Web Flux, not Spring Web MVC. And now it'll be using Spring Web Flux to send and receive HTTP GET and POST requests asynchronously to and from a microservice that provides a distributed semaphore. So you can get this example in my EX1 project in the movie Flux, no, sorry, the Web Flux um, folder in my Live Lessons GitHub repository. So this is the basic idea. We have a client, which is the test, which sends GET and POST requests asynchronously using the Web Flux features as well as HTTP interface, which is this new Spring 6 feature. We'll talk about this in a second. And the client can basically do this by making method calls on lock API. And you'll see that we've got very similar design to the previous example, except we've changed the types in many cases. So if you look back at the previous example where we did this with Spring Web MVC, we had it return you know, lock or it returned Boolean. And now it's returning flux or monos, which allows the client to be asynchronous and reactive. And as before, you can acquire locks either individually or in bulk. So this is using Spring uh, HTTP interface from Spring 6. The microservice can still acquire and release locks individually or in bulk. That hasn't changed. Just the way it's implemented has changed quite a bit. And there's a lock manager controller that plays the same role that it always does. It takes the HTTP GET and POST requests and turns them into Java types and forwards them to the lock service. But if you look at the interface here that's exposed to the client, once again, we've got a bunch of um, reactive types here for acquiring and releasing the various resources. So you can see we return fluxes and monos and so on and so forth. Likewise, the lock manager service, as before, uses array blocking queue, but it uses reactive programming, whereas before we used more object-oriented or functional programming, and it also uses virtual threads in order to implement our distributed semaphore. So we'll take a look at that. It's kind of fun. It's an interesting combination of virtual threads and reactive programming to give you the, the best of both worlds. The overall design of the project is pretty much identical to what we had before. We've got kind of a client and a server, and the server has all the things you'd expect to do a microservice, an application, a controller, and a service using reactive programming and reactive types, as we just saw. There's some common stuff, including the lock object and a utils logger, and a way to set the various properties programmatic or declaratively. And then the lock manager tests, once again, nothing really surprising here. It kicks everything off. It's got a very different implementation than the one we saw before, which we'll look at, but the overall design is very similar. And the main way that implementation differs is it uses the, uh, the web flux mechanisms and HTTP interface features to send and receive the, uh, the semaphores and the locks asynchronously. OK, so that's basically a walkthrough of the design and, and the overall uh, program layout. What are some pros and cons of doing things this way? Well, one thing we use is we use virtual threads on the server to improve scalability. If you recall before, the previous solution used the servlet thread pool. And there's only a kind of a fixed number of those threads. And we got clever by using the deferred result mechanism to do the processing off of the threads in the servlet thread pool. But this is just way cleaner. And you'll see how we, we just make a bean that allows us to be able to have virtual threads implemented to service the incoming requests. The client and the server are fully reactive and asynchronous. In contrast, the previous example we looked at wasn't fully reactive and asynchronous. The server was quasi-asynchronous, but the client was not asynchronous. And even the server wasn't entirely asynchronous. It just moved things off the, the main thread, but it still re responded uh, synchronously back to the client. And the other benefit is that the client uses declarative spring 6 HTTP interface asynchronous proxies. And that just comes along for the ride. And, and uh, there's no way to do that with the, with the retrofit stuff we've been using in our previous programming assignment. So the next version 
of the programming assignment, we'll switch over for some stuff to use HTTP interface. There are still some downsides, in particular, while the array blocking queue implementation of a semaphore is very clever, it's not the best way to do it. And if you take my other class when I teach it next time that talks about synchronization, we'll go into more detail about how you could implement a semaphore in a more efficient way. OK, so that's just a quick overview of the new and improved Lock Manager app case study.